future editor Bloom here. Instead of you guys just sitting here and looking at photos, um, here's some footage from Day Borrow we did on Sunday. We had so many issues with our blasters. That was our first game of 2020. Uh, hop ups, everything. Oh, disaster. But anyway, here's some footage for the background. Hope you enjoy. Hey guys, Bloom here from Gelspec Duo, and today we're going to discuss the topic of sniping in Gelsoft or Gel Blasting. There is a fair amount of confusion of if it's viable, what's the best upgrades, what gels, how long do I soak for, pretty much everything like that. So firstly, who am I? Well, I've been a very active member and a more dedicated sniper of the Gelsoft AU Discord. Link in the description below. There is maybe, I think, five or six of us who are all in on sniping with gels and gaining at least a range and accuracy advantage over other players. We are at the point now where we have completely rebuilt the JG snipers to become basically a one-for-one -one comparison with their AS counterparts and really can't push the envelope any further. I will discuss this a little more later. I would like to give a big thanks to Guy Guyington who has spent at least the last four months pushing the limits of what's achievable with what we can buy here and import into the country. Guy also does a lot of work with growing gels and has really changed what we know about both gels and sniping so far. Brady Phillips and Alter Eco also deserve shoutouts as they have contributed a fair amount to improving sniping and flushing out any issues along the way. If you have any questions at any point, simply post them in the comments below or head over to the Discord and ask in the Snipers channel. This channel is pretty much the go-to spot for information and anyone in there will more than likely be able to help. You can also message me on Discord and I can clarify what I've said or answer any questions you might have. Now before we jump into it, everything you're about to hear is the express opinion of myself and the members mentioned previously. Also note the date of which this video has been released. Things have no doubt changed since the video released in one way or another. I may revisit this video in the future, but currently all the questions we have received have been answered. Also, quickly, each question has been timestamped, so feel free to jump around the video if you are interested in a specific question. It's all in the description below. Alright, let's jump into it. So the number one question we see on social media and often get asked on Discord is, is sniping viable in gel blasting? Now before we can even answer this, we must ensure we are talking about the right thing. When we talk about sniping, we are strictly speaking about bolt action rifles with springs, not HPA or DMRs, although I will touch on HPA later. The short answer to this question is yes, the long answer is also yes, however with a little asterisk. To be viable with a sniper, you will have to rely on two things. Those being having a powerful enough build with a consistent enough accuracy, which gives you the advantage over the majority of AEGs, including the ability for the build to actually stay together with the additional power. And secondly, which is just as important, is not being seen. You'll have to play a strategic game and do your very best to stay hidden. Given the short distance of engagement, as soon as someone knows where you are with a bolt action, you're in for a world of hurt. And I know that from personal experience. This really limits an actual sniper at most fields, but does favor a well-equipped sniper at milsim events, primarily with scouting and staying hidden. So your first thought is going to be, but bloom, snipers are pretty loud. Which is true, The bold, a majority of the bolt actions in a stock loadout are pretty loud, but this is a quick fix with a decent spring. It honestly makes a world of difference, and unless you are by yourself, the sounds of others are going to really hide your noise that you will make. Also, sniping is a patience game. If you don't have patience, you won't really enjoy a bolt action. Unless, of course, you're 360 no-scoping people in CQB, which isn't really what we are about. Also, as attractive as that juicy headshot might be, this isn't airsoft. So realistically, you're going to want to be going for the more torso, center of mass type shots. You may get that golden opportunity for a headshot at mid-range, in which case, go for gold. Just never go for shots like that in close range. Although, if you are a responsible sniper, you wouldn't even be engaging in close range combat, at least not with your primary bolt action. Oh, I also forgot to mention, when I said sniping is a patience game, I didn't mean just on game day. Before you even step a foot on the field, you will have to fiddle with your build, hop up and gels. Control growing of gels will be mandatory for success, 
and when a game day does come around, a windy day will be your greatest enemy. This is why I always bring several blasters and may just miss sniping altogether on a game day depending on the weather. Next question, what is the most reliable bolt action gel blaster and why? So you got to really split this into two categories, simply a stock blaster with little to no upgrades, maybe just a spring swap, and then like top of the line replaced every part with the best kind of setup. Currently the best stock blaster looks like it's the MSR, given its build quality and performance out of the box. However, the MSR doesn't really take the top spot for the upgradability. The most reliable for a higher power, you know, we're talking maybe 350, 400 plus FPS build, would have to be a heavily upgraded JG series bolt action. So the M24, for instance, or any of the three in that line. So the M24, AWM, Car 98K from JG, as they all carry identical uppers and internals. You can replace every single part of the internals that you need with quality metal parts, including aftermarket parts. Now make no mistake, the first time you buy a JG Blaster and pick it up out of the box, you're going to notice it doesn't have great build quality. And if build quality is all you are after, the JG line isn't for you. But it's currently the price we pay to get a functional and reliable high powered bolt action blaster. Honestly, you will most likely cover the blaster in camo and nets and you know, grass and stuff anyway, so it's not a big deal. A lot of people think that the JY AWM is decent, and now the MSR falls under that builder blaster. However, there is issues with the sear and the catch when using much larger and more powerful aftermarket springs. This may change soon, however, without significant modification that is out of the scope of most bold action users, it doesn't compare to the ease of the JG blasters. So moving on, what are the upgrade paths like for bold action gel blasters and the costs? Expensive, straight up just expensive if we are talking the best of the best. I personally have sunk maybe $600 into my M24 and that doesn't include the initial stock blaster purchase. High-end aftermarket springs are going to range up to $60, $70, even $80, but trust me, it's worth it. No matter what blaster you choose, you will likely want to swap out the cylinder and its internals for something metal that's decent. Also a metal barrel and a hop-up. So right there, that's a few hundred at least. I went with the Brewsmaster barrel, which is not required, but a premium barrel for sure. Currently, as mentioned previously, the only one with an upgrade path that is both powerful and reliable is the JG series. Hopefully that will change soon so we can get some nice quality builds that can also be made nice internally and provide good performance. Straight out of the box, what's the best bolt action gel blaster in a stock standard setup? I kind of touched on this before, but I will, as I was writing the script for this very video, the MSR had been released and it honestly looks good. It has replaced the JY AWM in this category for best stock blasters straight out of the box. Its build quality is great and its stock performance is good at 260 FPS. I am not 100% confirmed on the internals of the MSR right now, but the JY is known to have issues with lead alloy sears and piston parts, even on the upgraded metal cylinder and trigger assembly. From the months of testing we have seen with the JY AWM, once you push things over the 300, 350 plus mark, they will most likely fail with some significant use. We have even seen them fail with just the bundled 1.2 spring installed, which really isn't great for a stock blaster. I personally haven't had the chance to open up the MSR, but from what I've seen so far, it more than likely will suffer similar issues to the AWM if pushed past its stock limits. Of course, I want to prefix this by saying this won't be every blaster, but from the testing done on several AD AWMs in the community, it's an issue worth mentioning. What gels are the best for bolt action gel blasters? There are only really three that are considered good to use, and that's the Armor Tech Yellows, Ozgel AT Ultras, and the AKA Tenacity Gels. The Armor Tech Yellows are pretty firm, very good consistency in sizing, especially when controlled growing, and it's pretty easy to get them in that 7.2-ish sweet zone, depending on your barrel ID, of course. The Ozgel AT Ultras are super firm. They don't deform much when hit by the cushion of air or in flight, but they don't have the best consistency, even with control grows. 
These do need a little more testing as potentially our methods are not the best for these gels. And lastly, the AKA Tenacity gels are just slightly under the ultras in firmness, but still very hard. Much better consistency, even with barely controlled grows. I would recommend these as the, that consistency in sizing is gonna translate directly into consistent FPS and shots. However, any of these three are great for sniping and you really can't go wrong. Do I need to do anything special with my gels? Growth times, sorting. Straight up, yep, yeah, you sure will. Basically, we recommend growing them in a single layer on a flat surface, like a baking tray for example, but you can use whatever you want to get a single layer and you want to agitate them every half an hour or so. Now, depending on your inner barrel ID, you'll want to grow them for that. So let's say we're using a 7.3 millimeter ID, you're gonna want them within 7.15 to 7.25 at least, closer to 7.2 the better. Now Guy Guyington recommends that once they have been in the water for two hours with you regularly agitating them, pull out 10 random gels and pop the calipers on them and see where they're at. Do this every 15 minutes or so to where they are where you want them and they show decent consistency. Pull them out, drain them and dry them off with paper or fabric towel. Now you're going to want to store them in an airtight container and try not to pile them up on top of another as they will warp a bit under the weight of the stack. And they're going to sweat water as well and that will drain into the other gels and make them different sizes. Once you get to know how long it takes for your desired size, write it down and next time you grow gels from the same bag in the same water, they should be around that time. Note, if you do change gels or water or a new batch lands, start the process again. I know all of this might just sound insane to some of you, but remember, we are not firing 5,000 gels a day. We want hand-picked the best gels out of the bunch, so this method makes them all decent gels that you can rely on. Also, you will find, particularly with the harder gels, dry and wet ones will behave very differently. Because they are running in a 50 centimeter barrel and the gels themselves are harder, you will notice friction a lot more if one is big enough and ends up filling the inner barrel ID or even exceeding it. Experiment with a chrono and you will notice how dramatic it is if you pop an oversized one in. Recommended upgrades, barrels, bolt kits, springs, etc. So we're going to specifically talk about the JG rifles and their upgrade path here. Number one, V3 metal bolt and cylinder kit. This is identifiable by the black screw on the nozzle at the end of the cylinder. Hopefully I can pop a, an image up on the screen to show you what I mean. I would not buy any other metal kits. Definitely do yourself a favor on that one. This is essentially a VSR-10 cylinder and internals with a guide epoxied onto it and a different nozzle. This thing is honestly tough as hell and compatible with the VSR-10 upgrades. It has an eight or nine millimeter spring retainer depending on the luck of the draw, but then but you can then buy the next item on the list. So number two is a VSR-10 upgraded seven millimeter retainer. This is pretty straightforward. It just allows the use of a quality aftermarket VSR-10 springs, which takes us to number three, springs. A good quality VSR-10 spring that suits the upgraded seven millimeter retainer. Uh, I think something in the M120, M140 range, which is 110 SP, 130 SP. You'll be paying a premium for these, but they are the best. They draw smoothly, even when strung, and they will lose a minimum amount of power over time. We strongly recommend the Lalex G-Spec uh, PSS10 springs. There are some cheaper options that are still good out there, but don't go cheap, cheap. This is a major part of your sniper. You don't want, you don't have motors or anything like that, so think of this as the core of a blaster in many ways. You want it consistent, smooth, and powerful. Also, don't go too big on the spring. An N170, for instance, will get you 500 FPS all day. However, none of the testing we have seen has been able to hit shit with it reliably at any kind of usable range. We recommend springs that will achieve an FPS of between 350 to 420. Number four, brown O-rings. That'll fit the metal kit piston. These seem like such a small upgrade, but will easily add 20 to 30 FPS and do, do it nice and consistently. Seals are very important, and inconsistent results with your blaster is often a seal issue. Ideally, the blaster should be pushing out the same amount of air every single time. Number five, barrels. There are only really two recommendations here, and we do not recommend bothering with anything else. One of the John Wang CHCG BB 
7.3 millimeter 50 centimeter stainless steel barrels or the bruise master gold series 50 centimeters we do favor the bruise masters here as you will definitely notice the gains in consistent fps due to the way the ball works on them however be ready to pay a premium and a significant weight on your order number six a good hopper the riser r1 is actually a pretty solid choice the version with the larger side vents on the side and the bottom tongue there is a less deflection, the gel is more centered, and testing has us believing the vents really do help give a bit more stabilization horizontally by helping with turbulence. That being said, there are a lot of good hop-ups out there these days, and I would suggest trying as many of them as you can. Also, Discord has an entire channel dedicated to hop-ups. Take a look there and ask some questions. Be ready to spend a long time adjusting it. It is very much a case of minor adjustments, fire three or four shots, minor adjustments, fire three or four more, and so on. Retune it regularly, and especially when you switch gels. Number seven, metal trigger. This one is not really needed, but we all love a metal trigger. Number eight, lubrication. 100% silicon oil on the piston head o-ring. Don't choose anything of too high or too low weight. For the metal on metal parts, look at something along the lines of a mid-high percent molybdenum. I think I said that right. Grease or paste. I wouldn't apply this until you've put a few mags through the blaster. Then open it up, see if you can spot anywhere, then apply it in those areas. Only use both sparingly. You don't want everything all gunked up. So moving back to the questions, what have we achieved so far in sniping gel blasting? Distance, accuracy, etc. So our primary tester, Guy Guyington, has a test range limited to 46 meters. He is able to put the majority of his shots in the center of a mass-sized area at about 43 meters, if he has it all set up well and there's no wind while testing. Actual achievable ranges are much higher, obviously, but usable single-shot accuracy drops off rapidly. It's not like an AEG where you can fire off a burst or high rate of fire, auto into the direction of someone, you know, angle it up and at least one or more will hit at long range. And you can just adjust your stream of gels on the go. If you're wanting to build a sniper for plinking coke cans and smaller targets at shorter ranges, you'll want a much lower power build. Think something in the 270, 320 FPS range. What do we need to do to improve bolt action gel blasting? New blasters, better upgrades, better gels. Basically all of the above, particularly gels. They are a major barrier for both distance and accuracy. Something with current hardness that was super consistent in sizing would make a big difference. Ideally in a new blaster we would like to see ones that have both great build quality but are compatible with aftermarket parts as possible. Being able to drop in nice upgraded parts with a minimum of fuss and piece by piece would be ideal. So before I finish up, I want to quickly talk about HPA. I've seen HPA mentioned a few times on social media, especially now with the HPA blasters popping up and a lot of people saying HPA snipers went. And I don't really think HPA will solve anything for us currently, not in the sniping world at least. HPA in airsoft is beneficial as it's more consistent and has much lower noise, not the issues we currently have in gel blasting. While it could always be more consistent, it really doesn't warrant the cost, especially since we have seen snipers with FPS variations of, you know, single to a couple of digits. And on a busy game day, sound really isn't the issue. Milsim events could have an argument to make there, but still, the cost just isn't worth it, especially if we are putting them in a pretty poor build quality blaster. Things might change in the future and the cost of running HPA might drop. If so, this might be viable. And I'm only talking about sniping with HPA. I also quickly want to touch on FPS field limits. This is going to be a huge issue moving forward, especially for us snipers. And I'm starting to speak with field owners. Potentially, we could bring in something like Airsoft where we can have high FPS cap on bolt action rifles um, with a set engagement distance. So anything lower than that distance and you cannot engage with the bolt action. This really isn't going to be an easy sell for sniping to even be viable. We have to break that 300 FPS limit and I know people may not take the distance seriously. So I don't know if this might just be a select rule for those trusted in the community or something, but it's definitely an issue. If you have any suggestions, feel free to contact me or drop a comment down below as we need to open the lines of chatter to get this worked out. I really appreciate those of you who have stuck it out in the end. Um, I hope this has given you a 
bit of an insight into sniping with gel blasters. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to myself or any of us in Discord.